On the death of Ismail II there were three candidates for succession, Sha with Makron H. Shaje, the infant son of Ismail, only a few weeks old, Ismail's brother, Muhammad Qutbanda, and Muhammad's son, Sultan Hamza Mirza, 11 years old at the time. Peri Kha with Makron Anknam, sister of Ismail and Muhammad, hoped to act as regent for any of the three, including her older brother, who was nearly blind. Muhammad was selected and received the crown on February 11, 1579. Muhammad would rule for ten years, and his sister at first dominated the court, but she fell in the first of many intrigues which continued even though the Uzbeks and Ottomans again used the opportunity to threaten safe avid territory. Muhammad allowed others to direct the affairs of state, but none of them had either the prestige, skill, or ruthlessness of either Tomsp or Ismail II to reign in the ethnic or palace factions, and each of his rulers met grim ends. Muhammad's younger sister, who had a hand in elevating and deposing Ismail II and thus had considerable influence among the Kizilbash, was the first. She did not last much longer than Muhammad's installation at Kashvan, where she was murdered. She was done in by intrigues by the vizier Mirza Salman, who was a holdover from Ismail II's reign, and Muhammad's chief wife Ger al Nisa Begum, known as Maud Ayuli. There is some indication that Mirza Salman was the chief conspirator. Peri Kha with Makron Anknam could master strong support among the Kizilbash, and her uncle was a prominent Circassian who held a high official position. Mirza Salman left the capital before Peri Kha with Makron Anknam closed the gates and was able to meet Muhammad Qutbanda and his wife in Shiraz, to whom he offered his services. He may have believed that he would rule once their enemy was disposed of, but Maud Ayuli proved the stronger of the two. She was by no means content to exercise a more or less indirect influence on affairs of state, instead, she openly carried out all essential functions herself, including the appointment of the chief officers of the realm. In place of the usual royal audience, these high dignitaries had to assemble each morning at the entrance to the women's apartments in order to receive the Begum's orders. On these occasions the royal edicts were drawn up and sealed. The emirs demanded that she be removed, and she was strangled in the harem in July 1579 on the ground of an alleged affair with the brother of the Crimean Khan. None of the perpetrators were brought to justice, although the Shah lectured the assembled emirs on how they departed from the old ways when the Shah was master to his Sufi disciples. The Shah used that occasion to proclaim the 11-year-old Sultan Hamza Mirza, Maud Ayuli's favorite, Crown Prince. The palace intrigues reflected ethnic unrest which would soon erupt into open warfare. Persia's neighbors improved upon the opportunity to attack Persia. The Uzbeks struck in the spring of 1578 but were repelled by Murtaza Kulai Sultan, governor of Mashhad more seriously the Ottomans ended the peace of Amiasa and commenced a war with Persia that would last until 1590 by invading Georgia and Shirvan. While the initial attacks were repelled, the Ottomans continued and grabbed considerable territory in Transcaucasia, Kurdistan, and Luristan and in 993-1585 they even took Tabriz. In the midst of these foreign perils, rebellion broke out in Khorasan fomented by, or on behalf of, Muhammad's son, Abbas. Ali Kulai Khan Shamlu, the Lala of Abbas and Ismail II's man in Herat proclaimed Abbas Shah there April 1581. The following year the loyal Kizilbash forces, the Turkmen and Takalil who controlled Kashvan, with Vizier Mirza Salam and Crown Prince Sultan Hamza Mirza at their head to confront the rebelling Ustajayla Shamla coalition which had assumed control of Khorasan under the nominal rule of young Abbas. The Ustajayla chief, Murshid Kulai Khan, immediately acquiesced and received a royal pardon. Shamlu leader, Ali Kulai Khan, however, hold himself inside Herat with Abbas. The vizier thought that the royal forces failed to prosecute the siege sufficiently and accused the forces of sedition. The loyal Kazibash recoiled at their treatment by Mirza Salam, who they resented for a number of reasons, not least of which was the fact that a Tajik was given military command over them, and demanded that he be turned over to them. The crown prince, the vizier's son-in-law, meekly turned him over, and the Kizilbash executed him and confiscated his property. 
The siege of Herat thus ended in 1583 without Ali Kulai Khan backing down and Khorasan was in a state of open rebellion. In 1585 two events occurred that would combine to break the impasse among the Kizilbash. First, in the west, the Ottomans, seeing the disarray of the warriors, pressed deep into Seyfavid territory and occupied the old capital of Tabiz. Crown Prince Hamza Mirza, now 21 years and director of Seyfavid affairs, led a force to confront the Ottomans, but in 1586 was murdered under mysterious circumstances. In the east Murshid Kulai Khan, of the Ustajalu tribe, managed to snatch Abbas away from the Shamlis. Two years later in 1587, the massive invasion of Khorasan by the Uzbeks proved the occasion whereby Murshid Kulai Khan would make a play for supremacy in Kashvan. When he reached the capital with Abbas a public demonstration in the boy's favour decided the issue, and Shah Muhammad voluntarily handed over the insignia of kingship to his son, who was crowned Abbas I on October 1, 1588. The moment was grave for the empire, with the Ottomans deep in Persian territory in the west and north and the Uzbeks in possession of half of Khorasan in the east.